Hey, it's Eric Wallman, number one best-selling author and keynote speaker, and we're here with some of our team today. We're outside, and we always have lunch together because I think that you have to break bread in order to really get to know everyone, and we're going to have a wild conversation here with just different questions that are hopefully relevant for you, and that's why we have this, and that's why we're filming it. We're filming it live on, on Instagram as well, so you'll see that probably first on Instagram, but we're filming it for you, whether you're an entrepreneur or an entrepreneur. Is it, or just within your organization, non-volunteer, a mom, dad, is this, we're trying to go over as many things that we're all wrestling with and just some thoughts that might actually help you on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'll start it off with uh, opening the floor to any questions that we might have out there. So I think it's a good question about the weather. When you talk about the weather, and I think it's similar to sports, is that it's just a safe place we can go. I try to avoid it. Even when my parents will ask, how's the weather today? And I go, I'm in Austin, it's normally pretty good. But I try to avoid that as much as I can without being a jerk. If I was a real jerk, I'd say, I don't talk about the weather, like, and be that guy. But I think all of us need to avoid talking about the weather. We can look it up. We know what it is on the phone, and we can see what's happening out there. So talk about stuff that's deeper, more meaningful. Uh, get into it. Obviously, if you need a safe place like sports, a lot of guys, we got to go to sports to where it's our safety zone. Uh, but if you can avoid that and get into deeper stuff, it'll, it'll be more rewarding for everyone involved in the conversation. I think the best way to make more connections on LinkedIn is to start with your existing connections. So a lot of us haven't even exhausted all of our current connections, whether that's from email, whether that's offline connections that we might have, and that's where you should start to form your base. And your connections, it's kind of that compounding effect. The more connections you have, the more that you might have potentially new connections. So I think that's always the best place to start on LinkedIn is use your existing base. Um, and even if you've been on LinkedIn for a while, you have to go back in there and actually go through it. I know I do and go, oh wait, this is crazy. I'm not even connected to this person on LinkedIn. And they're in my top 100 top connections in terms of what I write down, here's the top 100 friends that I need to stay connected to and I'm not even connected to them on LinkedIn. So even if you're a power user on LinkedIn, make sure that you're connected to everyone that's in your circle. It's a beautiful thing when you think about LinkedIn. You go to a networking event or just out on the town and Someone says their name, but you didn't get their business card, and that would have been a done deal in the past. But now, as long as you remember their name and who they're working for, you can find them on LinkedIn and then send them a note. Um, and sometimes it's easier for us that are introverted to where you're not, not asking for the business card. You can actually just look them up after that meeting that you had or encounter, and then going through it on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, obviously, I wrote a book on it, so very bullish on it, but uh, only going to grow in time. A lot of people probably don't want to hear about my opinion on politics, so I'll take a different tact on their question about what about all the stuff that's happened around Trump and the inauguration, there's a lot of negative, there's some positive, obviously negative and positive um, online. My thought is that it is what it is. I didn't vote for either candidate, I voted for a third party candidate. Norm, that's the first time I've ever done this. Uh, but now that Trump's in office, it is, I'm gonna say my prayers for him to do as best as he can. He's there, he's in office, so I'm gonna say the prayers for him to do as best as he can. Uh, a lot of people I know get off social media because it's all your personality. If it's just making you angry every day and negative, then don't read that. You know, Get off it and, and do whatever you can. But I would probably take that energy. There's a lot of energy. I love the energy. And do something positive. You want to raise awareness about female empowerment? I think that's fantastic. Raise awareness about female empowerment. But use that energy that you have. Harness it and be as positive as possible. The tips in the book, What Happens in Vegas, stays on YouTube specific that Complaining equals digital pain. So it's not about us being perfect human beings, but understand if you complain, the average person complains 15 to 30 times per day, is if you can just limit that to say three complaints, I'm not saying let's all be perfect and never complain, but you can stand out by just simply not complaining. Especially digital is a different animal because now that's a permanent digital ink. If you have that moment where you just lose it, and that's what the book What Happens in Vegas is all about, is really start to think about what you're gonna post before you do it. But I, I implore everyone, obviously there's a lot of people that are happy, a lot of people that are sad. On either side of it, just use your energy as much as possible to support those in this great country and move it forward, even if you didn't happen to vote uh, for that particular candidate. And get local, right? A lot of us spend a lot of energy at the national level, but everything really happens at the local level. So kind of put that energy at the local voting level and do as I say, not as I do, because I've got it on my plate. I gotta get more involved 
with the community here. Yeah, I think the best way to get local, and I'm kind of ashamed to admit it, like I've got it on the radar this year, is that us as a company, or me individually, is I need to step in and do more of that. So whether it's Mobile Loaves and Fishes, which is an organization that actually has trucks of food and clothing, you just show up in bad, rundown parts of town where people really need it, and then you help those individuals right away. It's an immediate reaction. So I love doing that. So it's trying to get my kids involved. So we're making the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that go into those trucks. But I think what I do do, and we've got to do more of, is what is our skill set that we can give back, our time? So in particular, we do animation, right? So we do some pro bono animation that helps a certain need. And so identify what do we spill that and then go from there, so, and that cause. And we've got it on our radar to really figure out as a team what do we align our business and also our passions with to make sure that it's all together and everyone's getting as much out of it as they possibly can. But again, I've got my hand raised. I know I can do a, a heck of a lot more, uh, and that's what we got on the radar to do it.